Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our KA50 and we're looking at basic flight, how to take off, how to manoeuvre in the air at low speeds, at high speeds. We're going to look at the different HUD symbology for basic movement of the aircraft and then how to land. And then we're going to talk about the dangers of uh, things you can do wrong essentially. Now it's important to mention that any movement in this aircraft is heavily controlled and influenced by several autopilot systems. And we've got five of them down here to, in our, against our right knee. You can see we've got bank hold, pitch hold, heading hold, altitude hold and flight director autopilot. Now as you see it here is the standard default configuration before we want to take off. And today we're not going to talk about the autopilots or use the autopilots as such. We're going to acknowledge that they are there. That is the default position that they are. And then we're going to talk about the autopilots and what we can turn off and on and much more about how they affect the aircraft in a subsequent video. So just for the time being, we need to acknowledge we're in default. We've got heading hold, bank hold and pitch hold on. And we're going to fly with that default configuration for now. So first we're going to look at HUD symbology for this basic, you know, the basic default nav mode that we're in at the moment. So we've got a heading tape at the top obviously and we're pointing roughly at due north for zero zero there. This marked triangle here shows the exact point that we're heading towards. This diamond here has two functions or it can be in two different modes. It can be a nav guide that's guiding you to your next point of interest or your next selected waypoint and that's the mode that we've got it in at the moment. Or it can show you your current azimuth of trim. So the first thing we're going to do today is turn off pointing to the navigation point of interest and we're going to change it to our trim because that's what we're interested in today. We're not going to be interested in navigation waypoints and stuff like that. That's another video. So we're going to go down to our PVI 800 here. This controls our waypoints, what waypoints we're heading to. We're going to click on waypoint there. We've essentially deselected that waypoint. And you'll see that this diamond has changed now. That's because it's no longer pointing to a navigation point of interest. It's now showing our trimmer position, our trimmer azimuth, and we'll go over that in a bit. Next, we've got our altitude here in meters, and it's got a P. P means radar, it's the Russian R. If we go above a certain altitude, like most aircraft, that will become barometric. Do you know what air altitude that is, Star? Uh, if I recall correctly, something like 600 meters. Roger. Next, we've got our pitch ladder. So this is our horizon line. This is essentially zero degrees pitch of the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. That is 10 degrees up, that's 10 degrees down, and obviously you keep going 20, 30, 40 and whatnot. Here is our attitude roll indicator, this little chap here, right wing there, left wing there, wings level, 30 degrees roll right, 30 degrees, sorry, 60 degrees roll right, 60 left, 30 left, zero left. This here is our accelerometer or our G meter, that would be zero. We're currently at one at the moment because it's just basic earth gravity. There's three, and there is our maximum as well there, and that's negative one. This is our vertical speed indicator here. We've currently obviously got no vertical speed. That would be plus 30 meters per second, Star. Yes. And minus 30 meters per second. And we've also got it in a form here, which can be plus or minus. Here is our altitude. If we're below 50 meters radar altitude, then we get this extra gauge here. 50 meters, 40, 30, and zero meters. And we're off zero meters there. Now, there is extra functionality that will display on this HUD. But it only shows in relevant circumstances. So if we're going a cert above a certain speed, we'll get uh, like a sp another speed symbology here. And so what we'll see as we do different things, go to different altitudes, different speeds, different parts of this HUD will disappear, and and other parts will come on. Now that's really confusing if you're not if you don't you know you're not used to this chopper. But the whole thesis of this chopper is to make everything as simple as you can for the pilot because it's a single pilot chopper and there's a high workload so lots of things will be changing on this HUD to display the minimum that you have to see at any time and that's also shown in the control of the aircraft and this can be extremely frustrating for new guys including me it's still frustrating in that the aircraft is going to do lots of work behind the scenes to try and help you and if you don't know what it's doing and you don't accept what it's doing you're constantly going to be fighting against those those that processing mainly controlled by these autopilots down here so you have to learn to work with them and then suddenly everything clicks and you'll be able to fly absolutely problem free so that's the big point i'm trying to make in this video right so the first thing we're going to do is take off and just learn to keep her in the air so what i'm going to do is press right control and enter or return you can see i've got my controls here displayed to you and you can keep an eye on them and therefore you can see when where my stick is so i move my cyclic pitch i move my cyclic roll i move my collective I move my rudder left, I move my rudder right. 
So those are the different controls that you can see. Now it's important to show how the trimmer works on this display here. And I'm going to in fact show you the button that the trimmer is. This is very important for a helicopter. You have to have trimmer. And we will be using trimmer like in any helicopter pretty much all of the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the stick into a position with a cyclic and I'm going to press the trimmer. I'm now going to release the stick. The stick is now released. I've not got my hand on the stick, but look where the stick position input is, is, is still off there to the up and left. That's because that's where I retrimmed it to. It's where I hit the trimmer, and that's where it's essentially saving that stick input. I'm now going to cancel that trim with left control and T, and that's now reset the trim. First thing we do, just basic takeoff and a little bit of not proper not auto hover, but just a bit of generic hover. Right, first thing we need to do is accept that the plane can't just take off as it is. We need to add some trim. So we're going to move our stick pitch forward to about there. You can see you'll have to mimic the same there. I'm then going to press trim. It's now retrim the stick to there. And my actual real stick is in now in a neutral position. We're now going to collect it forward. And just do it purely by feel, not violent, very slowly. Everything nice and slow and steady. And up we go. Now, the first thing to note is that she's moving forward a bit. I don't really want that much movement, so I'm going to pitch back a little bit on the stick. And just um, notice at the top left of the screen now of the HUD, we've got our speed there in ground speed. An interesting thing to notice, it appears to be bugged. It's stuck at 21. Ah, and it's down again. Um, and that's something we actually wanted to bring up, so I'm quite happy it did that. Do you want to try explaining that kind of laggy speedo thing again, Shaw? I'm not entirely sure what exactly it's down to, maybe the INS, probably just the double system needing, needing some warm-up time. Uh, if you do a cold start of the aircraft, you take off and you start flying immediately, uh, you often will not actually get the ground speed indicator on your HUD for the first uh, couple of minutes, which also if you then try to go into auto hover while you're in that state, will not allow you to do that properly. So if that happens, don't be afraid, just wait a little bit, it'll come. Roger. And now we've got a correct speed. This is kilometers an hour and it's ground speed. So I'm now putting in a little bit of forward motion and I want to arrest this forward motion. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to press and hold the trimmer when the stick is in the neutral position, like this. So I'm pressing and holding the trimmer and now I'm going to use the stick to arrest. I'm going to put a little bit of back motion in the stick to arrest my speed. And the speed is now coming down. I'm holding the trimmer, holding the trimmer, holding the trimmer, not letting go until I'm in my preferred speed. I'm also doing a little bit of work on the collective. That's just something you have to do. And I'm happy with that speed there. So what I'm going to do is let go of the trimmer now and let go of the stick. And now she's centered there at the speed I want of five kilometers an hour, or whatever that is. There's also something else I'd like to point out at the moment. I've got a display of my lateral movement. That there is my aircraft, where my, exactly where my pointer is there. And I've got a little arrow coming off from there, or a little line. And that's showing the direction that we're moving from my current position and how fast we're moving. So it, we're saying we're moving backwards and left by that amount of speed. If I were to hold down the trimmer and pull back a bit, what we can see is that line starts to extend as we go further backwards and left. Now I'm gonna roll the aircraft right slightly and we can see that, that uh, lateral movement is going, starting to come down towards me and now it's saying that I'm going forwards and left. So it's basically a, a lateral movement displayed in a line, azimuth and length. And if I wanted to get into near to hover, and I'm holding the trim button down while I'm doing this, I'm always holding the trim button down when I'm moving this, I'm going to ever so slightly move backwards now, so nose up, and cyclic right, and I'm going to get that right into the centre, and now I'm going to let go of the trimmer there, and now that's got me roughly, hold, roughly held to where I am in this, in this current position, which is hardly any lateral movement at all. One thing to mention, by the way, this uh, line only comes up if you're moving uh, less than 50 kph. So what I'm going to do is turn the rudder now, and I move the plane, roll, uh, sorry, yaw the plane to the right, and um, 20 degrees to the right. Now I'm going to let go of the rudder and watch what happens. It goes back. It's not letting me turn right. I wanted to turn right. I wanted to face that building. And that's going to be a very frustrating thing. Uh, why is it turning me back here? Well, it's turning me back here because my diamond is here. We've not got our nav selected. Our trimmer diamond is there. So we can trim in terms of azimuth as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll... Uh, sorry, I'm going to yaw right here again. And I'm going to press... Just press once the trimmer there. And now look how our diamond is now over this building here and, and now it will try and keep me facing in this yaw direction so if I now yaw to the right it's going to take me back to that pre-selected direction so it's a very important thing to know about this how this helicopter works how it flies 
and it can be very frustrating if you're trying to fight that trim diamond. Now, because I've changed the trim, I've messed up my um, speed a bit. You can see I'm moving over the ground backwards and left by this amount. So what I'm going to do now is hold the trimmer down and just arrest that a bit. So I'm going to put a bit of nose down, wait until that speed comes down, look at my little line in the middle until I'm happy with it. And I'm about happy with it there. So let go of trim. And then we've got our speed down, so we're more or less in the hover again. And you could have also, by the way, avoided that probably if you held the trimmer down from the get-go, but then you would have had to make some stick adjustments as well you know if you yaw you also have to compensate a little bit of the stick now if you if you're in in a hover like that and and just use your rudder your autopilot will do that for you but the moment you press in the trimmer why don't we try that then so i'm going to adjust my yaw diamond again so i'm going to press and hold the um the the uh the trimmer and i'm now pressing and holding and I'm making the adjustments here, a little awkward while pressing the trimmer because I've got it on my stick, it's okay. It's pressing and holding, pressing and holding, pressing and holding, pressing and holding, just trying to look at my line in the middle, my lateral direction line. And I'm just getting that into the centre with my new yaw position and release. Yeah, that worked really well, Charles. So what I did there was I changed my trim diamond, so it's now in the trim, it's now in the yaw that I want it. But I also, as well as that, managed to keep my lateral movement still and in control because I did a complete press and a complete press and hold of that trim and then just let go when it was in the correct position so that's uh yeah so we've got a good point there so and that's two different ways of using the trim we can just press the trim when we're in the desired course or, or yaw that we need or we can press the trim and hold and then release it when we're in our new position and the best way to do it all round seems to be the press and hold method next we're going to get some speed up and just see what it's like what new instrumentation comes up when we're flying uh, kind of 200 clicks per hour so you can watch my stick movements and see what i do to do this so i'm going to press and hold trim here i'm going to add some collective to get speed up we'll need to add some collective i'm going to your left here i'm going to fly towards these um still pressing and holding trim still pressing and holding trim and I'm happy with that kind of attitude there. Speed will slowly increase. Releasing trim now. Trim is now released. Stick back in the neutral position. As when I release trim, I stick back in the neutral position. And I'm rising a little bit in terms of pitch. Not quite happy with that. So trim button hold. Going to arrest that pitch there. To there. And release trim. And now we're flying just like I want. Again, it shows that I'm putting stick input here. I'm not. This, my stick is actually neutral. It's my trim that's holding it in that position. So I'm at my desired 200 clicks per hour. Maybe we should talk about top speed at this point, Stahl. Um, what kind of uh, top speed are we looking for this thing that we want to avoid? Well, top speed depends on altitude and weather. But generally speaking, anything above 250 kph start, starts to get kind of dangerous and about 300 kph is what I would use as a never exceed speed although it can be even lower than that. one thing to also note if you're going 300 or even less like 250 upwards be very careful with what you do with your stick um, because if you don't manhandle it and you just pull on it, yank on it some direction you can actually make your rotor blades uh, crash into each other. But generally speaking, the, the aircraft actually will warn you once you reach your never exceed speed uh, by loud beeping sound and your master caution starting to... Now, I noted that to avoid those buildings, I had to put some roll input in, some, some manual roll input, that, like that, and that's fine. When we are flying at a speed like this, it flies more like an aeroplane, so to turn the, turn the aircraft, what I'm actually going to do is mainly roll it right and then put some back pitch stick in along with a little bit of rudder as well but you won't just turn it with only rudder at a high speed like this otherwise apart from avoiding those buildings i haven't touched my, my actual control stick i've got i've got my hand on my mouse i'm moving this around but you can see it's trimmed in the position i wanted it to so so it's just flying along happily here i don't have to do anything perfectly happy i'm going to touch the stick now and um, just do some maneuvers just because we can one thing i pointed out because we're above a certain speed we've now got our speed gauge here with uh, 500 kilometers an hour drown speed shown there. There's our do not exceed speed, about 300 clicks, and there's our current speed, just over 200. Right, I'm just gonna do some um, some general movers, maneuvers just because I can. I'm gonna hold, press and hold the trim button, and I'm just gonna do some silly stuff just to show that we can make a move, almost like, kind of like a fighter plane here. We whoops, silly cap, don't crash. Takes a bit of getting used to. So to roll, so to turn this way, get a bit of your, a bit of rudder and a bit of roll and back stick like a jet fighter. Whee! And we can start heading back towards the base. 
Another maneuver but I would, I would never recommend doing in the KE50 is just a straight up roll, because that will usually also make your rollerblades crash into each other. What you can do, however, if you have enough altitude, uh, be advised you will lose a fair bit of altitude doing that, but you can do it, um, is a loop. Ah, uh, well, like a normal loop, like a straight over vertical loop. Kind of, sort of. I mean, it's not going to be very, mm, very circular, but in principle it works. Mondra. Now notice all the time Star was talking there, I've been pressing and holding the trim, and I'm still pressing and holding the trim button. Only when I'm perfectly happy am I going to release it, and I'm happy about there. Now I'm finally releasing it, you can see my trim diamond has finally reset, and look at that smooth transition of trim we did, the plane didn't jerk at all, and it's perfectly happy now just to fly on. And now, whenever I'm moving the mouse like this, it's my right hand, you can see I'm not controlling the stick anymore. It's just going to fly exactly as I left it. And we haven't made any kind of um, nasty trim transitions, which is a common thing to see. Right, we're going to run back to the runway now, and we're going to put her down. How dangerous would you say VRS is in general to a KA-50 star? Comparatively to other helicopters in this game, particularly the MI-8 or the Huey, not quite as bad, but it is still absolutely in danger, a danger if you're not careful. So do not go below about 5 meters per second. Uh, to I'm also not, not, not hovering at least. I'm also going to need you to give us the customary uh, 30 second description of what the VRS is to the new guys. VRS basically is a state that usually occurs uh, if you're hovering and descending into your own uh, downwash of your, of your main rotor blades. Uh, it can, however, theoretically also happen if you're slowing down, for example, and you just move down straight along the axis of the, the rotor. Um, and basically what happens is there are always vortices at the tips of your rotor blades. And once you enter your downwash, those vortices can extend and start pushing down on top of your rotor blade, uh, significantly decreasing your lift, and you'll end up just sagging through the disturbed air that your rotor blade is creating and you won't be able to correct it anymore by using more collective. Um, at that point what you will need is some forward or lateral velocity. Uh, if you just add collective you just make the vortices worse and you'll crash even faster. Roger, I like to think of it as a, like an airplane stall. An airplane stalls, you know, when you go too slow and the wings aren't working and um, you can kind of, you've got a way of stalling a helicopter as well although it's different uh, in terms of physics. Uh, just notice I've been doing some maneuvering here to slow us down and get us on course all the time. Finger has been on the trimmer ever since I left that cruise and I'm still got my finger on the trimmer. I might release now. Okay, I've released it now, transitioned into non... Uh, sorry, I've got the trimmer set now and you can see the diamonds in position. This chap here that's currently plus one, we don't want it to go down further than minus five to avoid VRS. Now that doesn't matter much when we're moving laterally quite fast like this, but when we get to the slower part of the landing, that's what we have to avoid, to avoid DRS, which is of course a death trap. Though you will also notice as soon as you start to enter VRS uh, or get to the limit of it, your helicopter will start to buff it. So as soon as it starts shaking in the cockpit, you know that it's time to either raise the collective or start a VRS escape maneuver. Roger. Okay, so what I've done now is I've pressed and hold the trimmer as soon as I've started move, maneuvering and I'm pressing and holding still. And now I'm going to concentrate for a little bit to move in for my landing. But what my aim is to lose plenty of altitude and I can do that easily at, uh, at a high speed lateral movement like this. I've got no risk of VRS so I'm just flying it almost like a plane at the moment to lose altitude. And now we're going to have to start transitioning. Now we're going to start slowing down so it's going to be nose back. I'm pressing and holding trim all the time, never letting go of trim here. And I'm balancing the, uh, the collective here, looking at my downward velocity, it's only minus one at the moment so we're fine. More back stick. I'm going to retrim there, so it's retrimmed and then back on the trimmer again. Trimming, or There's one thing, one thing to mention with holding the trim also does it, it overrides the autopilot system so they won't try to interfere with you. We'll just keep um, the more or less dampening systems of the aircraft on. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, it's a good thing. Uh, right, and down nice and slow. Um, I forgot to talk about my gear during that whole thing. Uh, to raise the gear, you press the G key. Uh, to put it down, you press the G key again. Just obviously make sure they're down before you land. But, uh, yep, so all, I've still got my finger on the retrim button, and that's it. Lovely landing. And I've pressed the retrim, and I've let go of the retrim there. So, figure support out there, most of that, all, every time I was maneuvering I had my finger on the trim button with these autopilots in the current default configuration. We've talked about the HUD, the way the HUD changes. I hope that helps and I'll see you later.